the Ones Ready Podcast, a team of Air Force Special Operators forged in combat for the over 70 years of combined operational experience, as well as a decade of selection instructor experience. If you're tired of settling and you want to do something you truly believe in, you're in the right place. Now here's your favorite CCT personality, JTAC extraordinaire, embracer of the ridiculous face, and like the shortest operator you'll ever meet, Peaches. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Ones Ready Podcast. You're in the team room with the one and only Chief Mass Sergeant Ivan Ruiz. That's right. Dude, I got to give credit where credit's due. Um, for all the folks that are out there that are listening, Ivan and I have been friends since about 2003 when we first met uh, yeah. out in the United Kingdom. So welcome to the podcast. We're, uh, we're happy to have you, man. Hey, thanks, man. And uh, I mean, you're just stuck with me because Aaron's uh, enjoying wine out, out in Napa Valley. Trent just oh, got time. off of, yeah, no kidding. Trent got off a massive road trip and uh, and Brian's out there doing his PA thing. So All right. yeah, you're stuck with me. Hey, man, it's the only way I'd prefer it anyway. So yeah, man. Well, um, so before we kind of get into some of the stuff we're going to talk about, and um, can you just dive a little bit into to your background, kind of where you come from and that kind of stuff. And uh, you can you can roll into your military career if you want up until the point we met and then we can go from there. Uh, so, um, you know, like Jared said, man, my name is Ivan Ruiz, uh, originally from uh, Panama. Uh, my father was uh, in the army. So uh, from there, you know, uh, we moved to uh, Fayetteville. Uh, after that, I pretty much, you know, I grew up in Heidelberg for about seven years. Uh, and then we ended up in Texas and San Antonio. Um, and that's kind of where I, well, then that's where I enlisted, uh, joined the Air Force. Uh, from there, you know, I just went on to my adventures of uh, <clears throat> uh, trying to uh, navigate uh, uh, INDOC and the pipeline the first time, which I was unsuccessful. Um, ended up going uh, TACP, uh, fortunately going TACP, which was a blessing. Um, and then, you know, from there, going uh, getting back into the pipeline uh, a few years later, uh, about exactly i was it was about 14 months actually i was actually on the job up in bragg before i was able to get back into the pipeline i was real fortunate at that time to get uh get back in so quickly <clears throat> uh got through in got through the pipeline uh first duty station was moody um and then from there i went to the 321st out in hall and uh that's you know when you and i met so yeah man so i mean that's that's a good point because we actually get a lot of uh, emails and comments, stuff like that about, um, you know, people that are either, you know, uh, fail an event at NDOC or during a pipeline and then, you know, have to go to another job and stuff like that. And uh, I mean, you're a, you're a great example of people that don't necessarily make it through the pipeline the first time, come back, do a reattack, and then really succeed and excel in, you know, PJ, CCT, SR kind of thing. So what was it that uh, knocked you out of the pipeline the first time? <laughs> uh, you know, so it was actually, uh, it was the run, you know, I just, you know, it was uh, funny because um, I think about it all the time, you know, I, I was, I think it was like week five when I double read it and I think it was the, the four miler and, uh, you know, I, like the few weeks before I just, you know, I knew, you know, I just knew like something was wrong, right? When uh, Rob Disney was passing me up on a run. I mean, I was like, like, you know, I'm not, I'm not getting this right. It's just not happening. And not to say that, you know, that, you know, that was the only, uh, that was the only event I was having issues with, but that's, that's the event that uh, ultimately, you know, I double redded and, uh, you know, I had to leave the course. So, um, but I mean, you know, at the end of the day, it was the best thing for me, man. Like uh, at that time, uh, you know, I just, I wasn't the right guy, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, I, I really, I've been really blessed in my career, man, to like the way things have gone down for me. Uh, primarily because of the path that I ended up on, man, and that path, you know, uh, led to uh, specific people being in my life, uh, man, my entire career. So, man, it was it was a blessing, and uh, you know, it was great, man. Like, um, you know, like I said, it was the best thing for me, man, to fail out and kind of help me realize I wasn't the person that I thought I was, or the person I needed to be, and I definitely wasn't the right person. Uh, I wasn't the right, you know, the right person to be a PJ at the time. So uh, ended up going to the 14th uh, ASOS, you know, up at Bragg, uh, you know, working with the 82nd, working with the, uh, some of the alerts teams. Um, uh, and uh, from there, you know, like I met uh, a bunch of dudes that uh, were in the same boat as me that, you know, we all pretty much cross-trained to, you know, we trained together, we cross-trained together around the same uh, 
Time Prayer, you know, Jesse Felina, uh, Tony Tarando, Frank Riley, uh, you know, um, Aaron Bowser was there. Uh, you know, we, uh, and uh, Jeff Clemens was there at the time as well. All of us at Bragg, you know, just kind of uh, crossing paths. Um, man, it, it was it was awesome. My time at the at the 14th uh, was, I would still say to this day, man, uh, in my military career was the funnest period of my life. Uh, but that was because, you know, the war wasn't around at the same time. And I think, you know, a lot of us young guys, we just really uh, were kind of not, not lost, man, but, you know, we just didn't really have a purpose. Um, you know, and I think that's, you know, that was one of the blessings that the war brought, at least for the TACP community, like, you know, it gave, it really, from my perspective, no longer being there, it really gave that uh, community a purpose and man, that, which they just excelled at. So, um, but you, like I said, you know, at the time the war wasn't going on and, you know, a lot of us all we cared about was, uh, you know, cross training and, and at least for myself, man, like my, my main priority was to get my Marine Beret and become a PJ. Yeah, well, I mean, any assignment where you're a senior eminent and you get to just have fun and little responsibility yeah. is a blast. So, <laughs> so I'm not surprised yeah. that was a fun. And then, uh, is that where you met Keith at as well? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you know, uh, and you know, still this day, uh, I keep in touch with uh, a lot of the guys. You know, uh, from uh, that group from the 14th, uh, which I man, I adore and I love those dudes. Uh, uh, but yeah, like my, you know, my, my best friend, uh, you know, that's where we met. We were roommates there and, um, you know, obviously still this day, you know, he, uh, we're very close. So, uh, yeah, man, like, man, it was a blast, man. I, I, I wouldn't, I would not change my path for nothing, man. It was, it was such a great time. So I do find it funny that, uh, yeah, Keith's a great dude, but I do find it funny that Rob Disney is the one that was passing you, uh, because Rob is not a runner uh, maybe he used to be back in no. the day, but he's not a runner. Not really, man. You know, I, I, you know, I think about it and I, I don't like, I, you know, so, uh, you know, when I got, uh, when I was going through the pipeline or I should say, as soon as I got to Florida for, uh, for tech school, right. For the press course for TACP school, you know, um, one, one of the instructors there who's, he just got there, uh, was Buddy MacArthur, which once again, man, was a huge man. I like, I'll tell this story, man. Like, it was, it was really huge, right? Like, you know, at first I was really still down on uh, not getting, not getting through uh, in doc. Um, uh, and, um, you know, I was like, we were on a, we were on a run one day for PT and I was on the front of the line and Buddy MacArthur was leading the run. Right. And like, you know, everybody, you know, we kind of really looked up to him cause you know, cause you know, he was tab and he'd gone to Panama and he was just kind of like, you know, you know, being a, you know how it is, man, being a student, you just like, you're in awe of like some of these guys, you know? And I remember we were just, we were on the run and we're like a mile or two in and he like, you know, he literally like he starts talking to me. He's like, Hey, you know, are you going back to, are you going back to Indoc? And I was, you know, I didn't know what to say. Right. You know, I, I didn't know if like, I didn't know if the right answer was like, no, you know, I'm going to be a tech P or like, you know, or, or be truthful. And, uh, and I told him, I was like, I, you know, I don't know. And literally he stops the run. And he turns and looks at me. He's like, no, you better fucking go back to Indoc. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, and I didn't know what to say. And he's like, he's like, I came in the Air Force to be a TAC P. You came in the Air Force to be a PJ. So you go do what you came in to do. And, and that was it for me. Like, that was like, my mind was like, I like, I'm on a path, man. Like my entire life as of right now is to become a PJ. So like, it was, it was a really defining moment for me, but to, to answer your, sorry, I just went on a, a No, you're good. Different. You're but, good. I love that story because I know Buddy MacArthur. <laughs> Yeah, you know, like, and still this day, man, like, you know, I, you know, when we were at, I was at the 23rd and he was running the fire shop, man, like, I remember, I, man, I had, I like, I went up to him and I thanked him, man, like that, like, at, that was, that was the first true moment that uh, I was ever mentored by an NCO, you know, like, and I have, a, I mean, my, once again, my entire career is just filled with those moments, like, I'm just that guy, man, and like, I have all these stories and all these, these uh, memories of, like, specific moments of, like, when, people have, uh, you know, like guided me, like and gotten me to the point that where I'm at, you know, uh, in my life. So, but I mean, that was like the very first time, man, like, and, and that was a testament to, I think, who Buddy was. Uh, I mean, he was just a, he was a really good dude that just wanted to mentor people and, and you know, make uh, his career field and other career fields better, man. So, like, you know, my hat's off to him, man. And, uh, man, I still owe, I feel like I owe a, a lot to him, man. So, yeah, man, like, I gotta love it, man. But um, but to answer your question, uh, really, man, like you know, not to, not to, you know, I think playing football and soccer in Texas, like you know, we just never got to drink water, so like I really didn't like understand what hydration was 
and really that was the only change. I just remember being at, you know, um, you know, I said like, at tech preschool and like, you know, they were, they would always harp on hydrating, hydrating. And so I started hydrating all of a sudden I just was able to run longer and run faster. And I was like, wow. And that was the only trick, man. So oh, water. How about that? Well, hey, <laughs> Shout out to water. <laughs> now I, I actually appreciate, um, and I know we're kind of going back and forth. I actually appreciate the fact that you're, um, that, that buddy did that, not because you became a PJ, but because there was no kind of that gatekeeping and hey no you know you you should be a tag p or you should be a, a pj like it was he was looking out for you and that's really what a good nco yeah, good senior NCO, absolutely. good officer should do because it they're seeing the bigger picture it's not hey let me let me take my my people and we're gonna go away like that's the bigger picture that's that's what you know the afsoc the air force you know, DOD in general is supposed to be about uh, an internship. That's why we tell a lot of the, uh, the brand new officers out of the academy and ROTC is find yourself a good NCO, a good senior NCO, and, and attach yourself to them because yeah. that person has a lot of life experience, not just life, but within the Air Force as well, that can help guide you. Um, I don't know, that's, that's you know, my the soapbox thing. <laughs> well, you know, what I'll tell you is... Uh, you know, being a uh, superintendent of a squadron, man, like, honestly, that's, uh, that's probably the, one of the best things that I enjoy about this job is like having, you know, the connections or, you know, not, I shouldn't say the power is definitely not the good work because I don't have any power here, but uh, <laughs> just be the fact that, you know, we, we, you, like guys like you and I, we have the opportunity to uh, be servant leaders, right. To like work, like truly work for our, the young guys. And, you know, and, and uh, you know, the young guys and, the young, you know, our members, the young women that work in our squadron. And, I, you know, regardless of whether they're an operator or support staff, uh, you know, when I speak to them, like, hey, man, like, wh what do you want to do? Like, you know, like, are you happy being a supply troop? Are you, is there something else you want to do outside of being a PJ? Like, you know, and, and if they say yes, I'm like, well, man, let's talk about it. Like, what's, like, what do you want to do, man? Like, and if they, you know, they tell me, well, I want to cross train or, you know, I'm looking at getting out and getting this job. I'm like, well, man, let's do it. Like, you know, what's the plan? Like, what's the plan? Like, you know, and, yeah you know like like you know what like what are we waiting on are you going to school like what you know what steps are we taking to get there and you know they tell me i'm like okay man like cool let's do it like that's the plan you know like you know they always want to talk about other options like now nope, let's option number one man like what's your plan what do you want to do and let's let's figure out how to get there like and and from there man it's like okay let's let's write some letters let's make phone calls like you know i i I really enjoy like, you know calling uh you know these other places uh, on the behalf of my troops man just to to be able to get them where they want to go, uh, to be successful in life. Um, you know, and when it works out, man, I, I, I really dig that, man. I really enjoy that. Yeah. And that's the unfortunate part about it is that it doesn't always work out, but it, you can make it work out a lot of the time. And when it does work out, it's, it's a good feeling and you get to see that they, yeah, you know, they, yeah, they prosper and they're happy. And, and really if, if you can keep somebody happy and motivated, they will, perform better they, they just yeah. will and and i'm the same way if i'm if i'm happy i'm more motivated and i will perform a lot better i agree man i agree like you know it's like being able to tap into you know how it is man like you know uh it's like managing one-on-one man like if you could tap into an individual's uh talents man like like you know you're gonna get the best out of them, man like you know what was it that you know that drives that person because every person is driven by something you know different uh and i think you know that's the art of uh you know i guess you know, part of the art of being a leader and a manager is like trying to figure out your people and knowing your people and tapping into their talents and what drives them to like, you know, help them succeed and, and get the best out of them, right, man, to get the mission done. So, you know, I think, I think it, uh, that alone is, is uh, something special that, you know, if, if you're able to do, man, like you, you'd be super successful in whatever you want to do. Yep. No, exactly. Um, so I did want to hit uh, a little story time before we get into your Air Force Cross uh, story. Because and you, I was going to mention it later on, but um, but since you were bringing up running with Rob Disney, running for you, um, you did improve. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because, in when did we go to Static Line Jumpmaster together? Two thousand five. Ah, yeah, I was just, yeah, I was just so, thinking about that. Yeah. So for everybody out there, like this is the kind of guy that Ivan is. I'm a I'm a little throughout this entire thing. So I'm, be ready to be embarrassed, but. Um, about two weeks before I attended static, man, I don't even know if it was two weeks. Dude, I was, I was, I was literally thinking about this last night of how <laughs> I would tell this story about some, like some crazy guy attacking you uh, in, in the middle of England and just stabbing you in the leg with some spear or something. 
No, I mean, that would be a better story than the fact that the guy is crazed. Yeah. Sean Harvell uh, (laughs) stabbed me Uh, and it wasn't his fault. But uh, anyway, I got stabbed for everybody out there in the leg. Uh, And so we had the PJs got a chance to do some live tissue training on me. Ivan was not one of them, but um, some some really good dudes got some live tissue training on me. So I've got these Frankenstein stitches in my in my thigh. And I show up to Static Line Jump Master, which requires a P- army. If I remember right, it's an army P2 test or whatever. Army anyway, test, yeah. it was a it was a mile and a half or a three mile run, whatever it was. Three mile and, run, um, and on one of the well, I mean, one of the worst three mile runs you could run. So yeah, yeah, hill, so. <laughs> because there was a bunch of hills. So uh, you know, and I've still got these stitches, and I there was no way I'm I'm a you know I'm not going to bypass the chance to go to a course that enhances my capability so there i am with ivan and we're on day one and i'm running this pt test and you know we i think it's a 24 minute um uh, time limit right and you stopped you were way ahead of me and you you stopped at about a mile left and started running with me and and i swear dude there's no way i would have made that and i think i think we made it and you the crazy thing is you you we did make it by seconds it wasn't it wasn't very long but i mean you risked failing out of the course or getting sent home taking the short course just to make sure that i passed the, the line because and those stitches were tearing through my skin yeah i mean like I remember that yeah. <laughs> they were because of all that exertion and, and stuff like that the, the stitches were ripping through my skin but there was no way i was going to fail Thanks to you. So, yeah. So your yeah. running definitely improved, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I wasn't sure if you remembered that or not. But yeah, you did that. That's funny, man. Oh no, no, I remember that, man. <laughs> I remember that. So no, that was that was good. Yeah, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, I mean, they would have sent me back anyway. So whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, uh, you know, whatever it is. So um. So, no, yeah, that was that was good, man. Yeah. So moving on to, uh, and we're going to skip, skip in time because uh, some other events happened in the early 2000s as well, but we'll, we'll follow on to that. But the one thing I wanted to talk to you about is your Air Force Cross, and I believe this was 2013, um, if I remember right, that all these kind of events happened. So you mind um, walking us, kind of doing a little story time and walking us from, from the beginning to the end uh, of of how you were awarded and all, all the events that kind of transpired during that time, uh, or don't. <laughs> I mean, right, I can sorry. talk you up. <laughs> I mean, what, what do we talk? I'm sorry. So you want to talk about? Uh, I want to talk about the Af- the Afghanistan thing where you were um, kind of sh- stranded with with two other of the ODA guys, uh, um, <laughs> and you kind of got into a fight, and then you ended up. Uh, treating them or treating at least one of them um well i'll require- give you the short story man i'll give you the short story and, and i just say that because like i you know it's i don't really uh for no reason i mean i just don't i mean i just don't talk about it so like to tell you the truth man like i unless i pull out uh you know the after action and like actually read it like i man like i just don't remember a lot of the you know a lot of the events i guess so like you know it, <laughs> to tell you the truth man like I've heard so many different versions of, of that, this story that, you know, at this point, man, I, I don't really what, know what's, what's true and what, yeah, you what, know? what's true and what's not. Yeah. Um, but I mean, the gist is man, like, you know, uh, just, um, uh, supporting, uh, the command of mission, um, uh, infilling on a, uh, on the X man and, uh, moving towards, uh, you know, the objective. And, you know, we, once we get into the objective, we get it, you know, we, we uh, the team, uh we uh get a strong point a stronghold point man and then from there we move to uh the inside of the town to like meet our objective which was to uh get to a possible ied facility making facility and just you know sweep the town to uh, just uh just to pick up you know id uh, possible id uh, uh, material and stuff like that um once we get to this to specific compound you know we just start taking fire uh, we were able to to actually uh, get you know clear the outer portion of the compound, enter the compound, um, and there was like a little lull in the fight. And uh, myself and two other guys decided you know just to kind of sweep through uh, the courtyard 
uh, just because um, the air support uh, before we actually aired, like, you know, ended up uh, killing some guys. So we just wanted to verify the KIA. And as we're sweeping through the compound, man, like uh, two, two of my guys get hit. And from there, literally, it was just, you know, uh, just pr- trying to provide suppressive fire because I could tell that, you know, the guys that, uh, you know, the bad guys that ended up uh, shooting my guys up, uh, you know, they were, they're still trying to like, uh, they're sort of trying to shoot them, you know, and sure they were dead. So literally, you know, my, my main job at that point was just trying to provide suppressive fire to ensure that they didn't kill my guys. Um, and it took a little while, but like, you know, finally, uh, you know, the rest of the, uh, not the rest, but some of my ODA uh, teammates, uh, you know, got up next to me we, you know, we were providing a suppressive fire to where I was able to get to get to our two guys, uh, with some help, you know, we were able to pull them back. Um, and you know, then the rest of the ODA team was, still, you know, so actively fighting. And then we were, I was able to get, you know, my patients into a little small spot, uh, spot uh, you know, provide medical, uh, medical treatment to ensure they were stabilized. Uh, we were able to call in air support, man, get a, a dust off in. Um, and, you know, this is all, you know, at night, you know, the sun hadn't come up yet. And it, was, it was about 17 degrees that morning. So that was really, you know, the tough thing was trying to keep my patients warm. We were able to get him to the helicopter, get him exfilled out. Uh, you know, I just remember passing off all my med treatment information to the uh, dust off uh, medic. And then it like, I was just in a rush, man. Like, you know, I felt like my, uh, the guys were stabilized enough and all I, you know, all I could, all I wanted to do was get back in the fight, right? man, join the team, ensure nobody else is getting hurt, uh, help them finish cleaning the compound. So man, I just remember like passing the information off, getting the guys on the bird, man. I just like, just sprinted back to, you know, back to the fight, man. And uh, just, you know, got in the stack and, you know, the guys finished cleaning the compound and, you know, we just we had to wait for nightfall to come. And then, uh, you know, the guys that I was, the controllers I was with, man, they lit up the sky, man, to, to get us exfilled. It was, it was pretty awesome. They put it on a pretty good show. And now yeah, we got out of there, man. And it was, it was a good day. And those, those two uh, injured, they survived? Yeah, 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 they're good. Uh, actually, yeah, it's funny because um, I was just texting the other day, uh, the uh, one of the guys, and, you know, he's like a team star now. So he's, you know, he got back on status as soon as he could, uh, you know, had a lot of, uh, a lot of work done on his leg. I think, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, he, he wears a brace and stuff like that, but I mean, he was a stud, man. He was awesome, man. So, uh, like, you know, I, I never had a doubt that he was going to be back in the fight. Yeah. It's, um, did you, after you handed off, like, and, and you start going through, you know, things, things kind of calm down, whether you're still on the objective or whether you're, you know, back at the FOB, did you start kind of recounting the medical treatment that you provided and you, you start going like, Ooh, I wish I had done this better. Or... Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, like, you know, like the things, you know, I, I, I don't know, man, like, I don't like, I'm sure just like all the guys, just like yourself, man. Like we don't like talking about ourselves, man. So I, you know, truth be told, man, I, I do, I do find it difficult talking about that specific uh, mission. We'll call it that specific mm-hmm. mission. Cause you know, it's been so high. It's been, you know, cause it's I don't know, been highlighted, whatever the case may be. Right. And yeah. like, you know, I, I feel more embarrassed than anything else. Like when people talk about it, so like, you know, what the things I do like talking about it are like, you know, the mistakes I made, right? The, the like, you know, the things I talk about, are like the funny parts, like, you know, you know, if it was on a movie, dude, right? Like you guys like you and I would just like die laughing, like, and you know, and honestly, man, like, you know, you know, in my head, that's what comes up is like just the, the comedic portions of, uh, of like what happened. Like, so, I mean, you know, when I was dragging, uh, you know, Tom back, you know, he was, he was the guy that was mainly uh, injured, you know, as I'm dragging him back, he was a bigger guy than me. So like, you know, it was, it was a little bit of a hole. Cause I, not only that I had to get him up like a four foot, you know, kind of wall, but as I'm dragging him back, you know, I'm like, I'm watching my, our team sergeant just like, just annihilate these guys, man. He's he's like, you know, their grenade went off. I can see him flying through the air and he like does this ninja roll, gets back and just starts <laughs> laying down waste, man. He's just, just laying down. Hey man, it was awesome. Like, you know, I'm, and this is happening as I'm pulling him back. But, you know, the first thing I remember was as I'm dragging Tom back, uh, like I see his leg where it's severed and like, you know, it's being held on by like, you know, just by a little bit of flesh, you know, and I'm just like, you know, and I can hear him like, you know, he's and he's obviously in pain. Right. And as I'm dragging back, I'm like thinking in my head, I'm like, holy shit, man. Like, you know, I, you know, all I'm doing is hurting him. Right. Like I wish like I immediately just picked him up. Because, you know, going through SOMC, going through the 18 Delta course, like we never, we never drag our patients. You never drag your patients. Like you always pick the guy up. And so I remember like thinking to myself, and this is all going through my head as like, you know, I'm watching this, you know, firefight happen in front of me. Like I'm not, you know, 
you know, you know how it is, man. We're not thinking about ourselves. Like there's just so many things going on in your head. Yeah. But I'm, you know, somewhere along the line from going through SOMC in 98, 98, 99. And now I'm 2013. Like, you know, for some reason it might like, we just stopped picking our patients up and we started dragging. Like it was like grab, you know, grab that handle on the kit and you drag, right. You know, we have drag straps all of a sudden and, uh, man, like I wish I had picked them up instead of dragging them through that dirt, you know? So yeah. not only that, you know, as I'm dragging it back and I get to the, you know, I get to the wall, uh, you know, as far as I can advance, like I trip over like a step and I literally fall head first into these bushes and I, and like, I couldn't get out. Like it was like, you know, straight off of like a cartoon, like where my you know, your feet are like, like I couldn't get my out. And so as soon as that happened, like some of the OD, uh, some of the ODA guys showed up, you know, they left the strong point and they showed up to, you know, uh, where we were at. And literally, you know, it's like, like a movie, they picked me up with two legs and like, you know, I stand up and I'm like, my, I just remember my hands hurt like crazy. So I remember loud nods. I'm like staring at my fingers. I'm like, ah, and like, like three of my fingers were dislocated. Cause I, I fell you know, that way. Oh. So, I, and, and I remember uh, our junior Bravo, he just like looks at me, he yells, he's like, ah, and then he like grabs my fingers, like pop, 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 pop. I'm like, ah, I'm like, ah, all right, grab him. Like, let's go. You know, <laughs> it was like one of those things. So, you know, as I'm, you know, we get him up this wall and um, we had killed four guys, like as, you know, trying to get into the, the main compound, we had killed four guys, like right at the entrance at one of the main buildings. And they're like, they're literally just laying on this. There's like, it's like a, maybe like an eight by eight, uh, piece of you know land that wasn't you know that was the only cover we had from the engagement that was going on so you know trying to keep tom out of that that uh, line of fire i had to drag him over these four bodies and to get to this little 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 spot where i can treat him and the funny thing was like you know when we after we got back uh we went straight to the hospital because he tom and uh you know i remember he looks at me he's like dude I thought I was dying because I thought you were putting me in like putting me into an expected pile with those four oh. bodies. And I was like, Holy shit, dude. I was like, I didn't even think about that. I was like, Oh my God, dude, I'm so sorry, man. Like, you know, <laughs> like, you know I, I, when he said that, I can only imagine like what was going through his head. I yeah. Was that like, oh feeling, God, like, oh. dude, you know, <laughs> exactly. So, uh, you know, that happened. Um, and you know, probably the, the, the last thing, uh, you know, I, I really was really happy with the treatment that I gave. Uh, you know, the protocols I followed, uh, you know, thinking about hypothermia, you know, I always carried like, you know, my big puffy, our, our linebacker jacket, I always carried that with me. And then like, you know, I, I remember uh, calling to the guys from the strong point, you know, if they came to bring that. And that's what I, I covered Tom up with my, my linebacker jacket, you know, before I packaged them up. And like, still this day, I have it in my locker. And, like, I still have his blood on it. I, I don't, I don't ever wash it off, man. Um, but, you know, the, the last thing I remember is, you know, because we had to get him over two walls to be able to, like, get into the field to get him to the helicopter. And I remember as I, uh, like I said, you know, uh, after I handed him off and I started sprinting back, I got to one of the walls and I saw, um, I saw his, uh, the IV bag. Like, the, I, I saw the IV bag that I, I you know, on the, uh, on the floor on, by, like, the second wall. And I was like, holy shit, like, you know. So somehow, like, it fell out of the litter, and, you know, it got pulled out. And, you know, th what made me think about that was, like, you know, I was, the one thing I thought about as soon as I saw it, it's funny how all these little things were happening so fast. <laughs> but literally, I was, I was super proud of myself because when we uh, went through SOMC, once again, you know, I'll, I'll keep to your harp on SOMC because that, that, it's just such a phenomenal course, um, or it still is. But I remember, like, you know, like, the instructors would grab your ID bag after you like, you know, you taped, uh, taped it onto your uh, patient and they would like full force throw it. Right. So, and like, you know, so if you didn't tape it good enough, like that, the whole thing was going to come out, the IV, you know, your, your cat is going to come out. So it was like a big deal to ensure you, you tape it up and make sure that, that, that catheter has come up. So like, you know, somehow somebody might've stepped on it and the force, you know, pulled the bag out and not the catheter. I mean, you know, still grand, he could, you know, he's probably bleeding out, but I mean, I was so proud of myself that my catheter didn't come out. <clears throat> But it was, it was those, it was those, those are the things that I, I, I talk about, and, uh, you know, I, I remember and, you know, things I need to fix, man. So it's that, you know, you know how it is, man. It's, it's like the little failures. Uh, those are the things that I remember. And, you know, like those are, you know, things I need to fix and do better. That's kind of what I remember. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, just, it's the same thing after we do a cast mission, you know, because there was a troops in contact or something like that. You start reviewing the tapes whenever you do get back to your fob 
like, what, what the hell did I say? You know, and then you, uh, you, you know, you messed up the nine line or, or whatever it is. And you're like, geez, dude, what is going on? I should not be a, a, a combat controller or a JPEG <laughs> anymore. Like you just, uh, but um, yeah, for, for everybody that's out there that is wondering what expected means it exactly what you, uh, what, what yeah. it sounds like you're expected to die or you're expected to pass. So you know, I've been putting, <laughs> putting them in that, not in that pile, but near that pile or, or him having that, uh, you said, Tom, right. Having that yeah, yeah. Mi mindset that uh, I'm expected, like that definitely could have gone worse. I can only imagine what was going on in his head, but um, you know, a common, a common theme that between you, me and, and everybody else that has, you know, been in situations like that is that there is some funny stuff that happens there's funny things that are said like i mean all of a sudden you know you're you're injured you're bleeding out you're a comedian for for whatever reason there are some funny oh, yeah. things that come out of your mouth yeah. um you know and, and there always is the i didn't know that your fingers got got dislocated yeah man i just remember that it was it was so funny man like you know and you know as it's happening like you know you can you, you know how it is man you consciously like you're like holy crap man i can't believe this is happening like right now you know, and I just remember like the look on, uh, on you know, the our junior brown's face, Jason. I remember. <laughs> I don't even know why he yelled. But, like I showed him my fingers, and he like it freaked him out, and he yelled, and then he just immediately grabs him. It's like pop, 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 pop. It was like, and then I was like, ah, all right, come on, man. You yeah. know, it's like one of those two. So yeah, man. yeah, you don't get you don't get time to even think about it. You just go. Yeah. But I mean, you you always hear about the the guys walking on nods, doing a patrol, and all of a sudden they boom, they fall over a fence, or there's a ditch, or you know, uh, you're you're in Iraq, and all of a sudden you're like, why is it squishy? And then you realize you're in a, a cesspool. Like, oh yeah. gosh. So yep. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I honestly, you know, we had uh, we have Gutierrez on um, a couple of weeks ago. You know, we've got you on now. We we've had some folks on there that have. That have really seen some stuff and i i'm always hesitant or at least cognizant of the like it's you guys did some phenomenal things right and at the same time you know you a lot of times the the air force will put kind of the hero tour on right where you're going to and doing speak engagements and reliving it every time and i don't at, at a certain point i think that's healthy but it can, it can quickly spiral out of control. So um, it is definitely not my intent to have you have you sit here and dwell on it and talk about it. So we'll we'll shift gears a bit and kind of go to Hurricane Katrina because you were one of the main. I was going to yeah. say you were one of the main PJs during uh, Hurricane Katrina. There were obviously a whole bunch of phenomenal work that was going on by. Um, everybody that was involved in Hurricane Katrina. But why don't you dive into some of those stories? All right. Hey, real quick, I'm going to see if I can I keep, because by the, uh, I'm using an iPad and the camera's on the side and I can't freaking see it. It's, oh. it's really annoying me. Let's see if that, <laughs> that works better. That's not going to work better at all, man. All right, we'll stick with what we got. Uh, so yeah, man, dude, I, what a blessing, man. Her, like, I, I, yeah, during an unfortunate event, right? Like, um, so at the time I was at Moody, met as a 38th, uh, and like, you know, obviously we knew the, the hurricane was coming and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, man, like, you know, we, we got the call that night as the hurricane's going on that we were going to, you know, that we were going in. <clears throat> so, I mean, you know, that, that was kind of like, you know, uh, you know, that point, like, man, Mo Moody was such a great place to be because at the time it was, it was the biggest PJ squadron. So, what, you know, there are a lot of taskings that, you know, other squadrons can, uh, you know, fulfill got kind of handed down at 38th and it was, you know, it was always a bunch of just different things, but regardless, I mean, you know, uh, at the time the hurricane, you know, it was, a uh, the civil star stuff, you know, it was just something that we always did anyway, but, but I mean, I was, uh, you know, we, we got down and we based out of a, a guard base, I believe out of Mississippi. And, uh, as soon as they, I mean, like we got there that night, the night during it was going on. And then the morning, uh, you know, we kind of like, all the helicopters showed up, uh, you know, PJs were still coming in from different parts of the country. Uh, so we were actually one of the first squadrons to be there. And I remember we were in this big hangar, like it's like four in the morning, like, you know, uh, the morning as soon as it passed. And we're in this big hangar, man, like everybody's kind of staged in their gears, all the pilots for like, you know, big brief from their, and the, you know, their whiteboarding, like trying to get names you know, putting a, uh, two PJs per helicopter. And uh, man, I just remember like all this chaos was going on. 
so I was, I just decided to like go up into that room with the helicopters. And, uh, at the time I, I was kind of, uh, I was kind of friends with one of the, uh, one of the, uh, majors from Moody, one of the pilots. So I walk up to him like, Hey, what's going on, man? Like, you know, what's the roster? Who's going in? Like, who's going on the first flight? And he's like, well, I'm on the, like, I'm on the first bird going in. And he's like, uh, he's like, do you want to come with me? I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm going to come with you, dude. <laughs> so, so like literally, he, you know, he puts my name on the board, man. And, uh, and like, and it's crazy, man. Like, like, you, like, it's just nothing you've ever seen. Like you, you had PJs from every, every base, like in this hangar, like literally getting into fist fights to try to get on the, on the first flights into New Orleans. It was awesome, man. It was such, it was such an awesome thing. So like, you know, at the end of the day, man, the rosters are filled out. We, you know, you had 12 hour shifts, you had the day shift, you had the night shift. And I was literally on the first bird going into like, you know, there's like, and it was like an armada, man. Like, you know, every six, just about every 60 from, you know, the guard reserve active duties were like, just was just flying in full force, you know, from Mississippi into New Orleans. And man, it was such a, uh, such a cool um, thing to be part of, man. Like it's still in my top five, like, you know, like deployments to, uh, to be, uh, you know, to actually get to do some work. And, you know, like every, every season, every uh, older J had a, you know, a new guy with them. So like, you know, it was a great opportunity to like, you know, for mentorship to teach, you know, guys to get them spun up, you know, on, uh, you know, AIEs and flying in the back of the helicopter. Um, and like, you know, like the guys were, I mean, like, I mean, guys were doing hundreds and hundreds of voice, you know? And I think, uh, you know, the thing I'll, I'll remember most was like, I think it was like day three and uh, it was, it was uh, towards the end of the shift uh, before we flew back to Mississippi. And like the sun, you know, the sun's starting to like go down so that, you know, the sky is orange. Um, like there's the, the refinery on the water, like, you know, it's still on fire, man. Like just, there's just fire just going off everywhere. And I was hoisting down onto this, uh, onto the bank because uh, they had an American flag that was like just waving and, you know, just get all torn up and stuff. So I was going to try to go down and cut it off. Um, and as I'm going down the hoist, for whatever reason, I just decided to look back and man, there's like, 12 to 15 uh sixties in the air and every every helicopter had a pj going down the hoist and i just remember like you know my, my mind just stopped and then, like i took this mental you know picture and i just remember like seeing this like you know snapshot of the sun going down there's fires everywhere and like helicopters and like and literally every helicopter had a j going down the hoist in this background you know and i was just like dude it was, it was super proud like a super proud moment for the career field man i was and like, you know, the guys did some phenomenal work, you know, it was awesome seeing like, you know, uh, you know, what, I, I don't know what it's called. I think we called it the Clover, but, you know, like, you know, we had the guys from the, you know, one, two, three, like controlling, like controlling all the aircraft out of that one little spot. Uh, you know, like you could look down and see like, you know, uh, you know, all, you know, a lot of the ST guys like, you know, doing all the, you know, boats, you know, you, you know they're running through like all the towns and boats, man. It was such a surreal uh, event, uh, man. It, it was awesome, and you know, it's funny is um, my brother lived in New Orleans at the time, and I remember, uh, you know, he had uh, he had evacuated like the maybe two or days before um, the hurricane hit, but he had he had wrote like on his roof like PJs only on his roof, you know. And I remember I hoisted down out of the house, and I had to like uh, chase uh, these guys out of the house, like you know. Um, Man, it was just crazy, man. Like it was just, it was just nuts. It was, and the, you know, you know how it is, man. There's so many stories that uh, I could tell about that uh, that experience, man. But uh, it was, I felt super lucky to be part of it, man. It was, it was awesome. awesome. All right, man. You, <clears throat> dude, you covered a lot there. Um, so okay, so one, you actually hoisted down to your brother's house and chased some dudes out from looting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's, that's pretty cool. Um, also like, dude, that's, that's somebody needs to paint that. Yeah. You know? I, I'm uh, telling you, man, like that would it, yeah. be an amazing painting or, or, um, lithograph or something like that, because I, I mean, I, there's so much work that was put in from the PJs, the 60 crews, the, the ST guy, it just everybody, it was such a, a huge operation and, it's a, you know, it's a humanitarian event on, on U.S. soil. And there was a lot of, I, I remember um, on the news, one of the, one of the generals, one of the guard generals was going around saying, hey, we're declaring martial law because you guys were getting shot at. Yeah, man. So, I mean, like by day two, we like, it was, uh, you know, because we were on nods, like you can see, like, I don't, you know, 
I didn't know at that time. I didn't realize like, you know, you can go to Walmart and buy trace around. Like, you know, you just saw trace rounds flying and like, you know, the pub's like, Hey man, we're being shot at. So like, uh, it was like day two, like, you know, we realized, you know, you know, there were people on the ground just like, you know, taking pop shots at the helicopter, man. So that's really uh, the first time, I think on day three, literally that morning, you know, you had marshals like, you know, going through the cities, but, and we started carrying actually. Did you? Uh, we had to, we started concealed carrying uh, after that night, uh, especially, you know, the, you know, cause we were going through buildings and houses and stuff like that. So we did, you know, you didn't, you didn't know what you were going to come upon, but um, especially when, uh, man, when you get to some of these overpasses, man, like, you know, which was you know, super sketch because, you know, you know, how it is, man, like people just, uh, you know, people are just scared and, and uh, you know, terrified, man, and they just want to get out of there. And, you know, they kind of feel like, you know, uh, you know, the selflessness of sometimes of people just kind of goes out the window and, and it showed, man, unfortunately it showed like, you know, we'd be on overpasses and we'd have to do crowd control. Like, you know, you try to do it like a hundred yards from the, the helicopter. There was a, there was one time where, you know, we filled up the helicopter and I was trying to like, I was trying to talk some guys down, like, Hey man, we're coming right back. With, you guys are next. Right. And, uh, you know, and literally as, you know, I look back and like, you know, uh, my teammates like, okay, we're good. And he's on comp, he's like, oh, we're good. And I'm like, okay, man. And I, I turn around and just start sprinting, try to get to the helicopter. And like the crowd, it's like a zombies, man. They're like, yeah, yeah. come, you know, it's like, holy, you're just like sprinting. You jump on and, you know, and you take right off, man. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, that des- desperation is, and be it, you're, you nailed it. Desperation is scared. It's, it's not that people were shooting at you guys out of, um, you know, I, and I'm giving it a benefit of the doubt. It's not like they were shooting it to cause chaos or to cause harm. It, it is, it, I see it as frustration. You're scared. You're desperate. You've got, there's only so much room on the helicopter. You've got, they, you know, they're in a line or they're probably, there's probably no line because it's crowd control. Like you yeah, said, man. Yeah. and people are, people are just jumping in front and you got people that are desperate and it's like, they're, they're pissed because dude, you told me the last time you were here, you're getting me out. Yeah, and now right. somebody just jumped in ahead of me and it's just, it's chaos and crowd crowd control is huge. And that's, that's actually, uh, we did a, a Hatter exercise just a couple of weeks ago and we put about 30 SEER students uh, with six, six PJs, controllers, and SR, um, you know, handling a situation, a, a mask has situation. And the whole goal was, yeah, okay, the medical stuff, but it was crowd control. And these 30 SEER, got, seer folks are just re- wreaking havoc. Um, yeah. and, and crowd control is difficult. And, that is, and man. For, for what you guys were doing at that time, yeah, that's sketch. Yeah, yeah, man. And then, you know, and we saw that, right? We saw that, uh, you know, for, uh, just a couple months ago, right? You know, with the, what the guys were doing, man, uh, the big portion of what they're doing was crowd control with, you know, folks that were probably even more scared and more desperate. So, you know, it's part of the job, man. It sucks. But uh, yeah, man, either, either way, like, you know, like I said, man, like those, those, <laughs> those events uh, at Katrina, man, uh, that man, like, the, you know, I, I could talk about it all day, man. It was, it was awesome. It was such, it was such a, uh, it was a blessing, man, to be part of that, especially with, you know, and it was like a, a huge PJ reunion. It was, you know, it was so cool, man. Uh, man, awesome. Top five, of, top five of my career. Yeah, well, you know, you talk about a bunch of PJs getting in fist fights to go. Like, no kidding. We, we've talked about it on podcasts before. It is a competition, whether it's yeah. you and me. Like, I want to get on that bird before you do. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's just reality because I want to go in there. And, I mean, I've seen, you know, dudes that are, you know, there's only three deployment slots or something like that. We got a team of 10 and it's like, no, dude, I, you're lucky. I'm not taking a freaking baton to your legs yeah. just to, to hurt you so that I get on that. <laughs> so it's not surprising well, I mean, you guys are getting fist yeah. fights. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, it has been like, none of us came in to do this, you know, you know, for the most part, none of us came in to do this, to sit around, you know, no. and you know, you know, the guys, you know, reputation is everything to the guys and, you know, everybody wants to just prove themselves and everybody wants to have that opportunity. Um, and, uh, you know, while, you know, while the fire, you know, that fire, that internal fire is hot, man, like you can't ignore it, man. And, uh, yeah, man, you know, it's, yeah, it's all, it's all, you know, you just want to be in the game. Like, you know, nobody wants to sit on the sidelines. So yeah, it is what it is, man. Like, I, you know what, man, like, I, you know, I, I, I'm not ashamed to say it, man. Like I, I know some people look down on it and, because, you know, I'm a senior guy, you know, I should be, you know, let the young guys do that. But I, fuck that, man. Like, you know, I only have so much time left, man. If I have an opportunity to go do something good, I'm going to go do it. Like, you know, those guys have, they have their whole career, you know. 
yeah that's how i look at it and i, I know i you know i admit man that may not be a good way to look at it but like i didn't come into the i didn't come in to be a pj to sit around and do nothing so yep. it is what it is I'm with you. And that's, that's actually one of the concerns, uh, you know, now that Afghanistan is not a thing, there's a, there's a lot of concern about folks that, Hey, I'm going to be sitting around and Hey, fear not. We always find uh, work and funny enough, things in the world always tend to pop off, whether they're stateside or overseas. So if you think you're going to be sitting around doing nothing for very long, you're yeah, you're, right. You ain't going to be. So, yeah. um, so switch gears a little bit. Uh, when you, I can't, I can't remember, so you'll have to forgive me. I can't remember if it was uh, what years you were an in-doc instructor, but uh, I would love to revisit your time there because when you were an instructor at in-doc, it was just PJs going through, right? Right, right, right. So uh, I got there in the summer of 08 and then left for the 2-3 in the summer of uh, 12. So I was there for that four years. Okay, so you spent four years as a in-doc instructor, just yep. wreaking havoc. Um, <laughs> for the, and I'm, I'm going to say that because I can only imagine the pain train that uh, people were on. Because for anybody that doesn't know Ivan, um, he's he's probably right now the most physically fit chief that's out there. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm serious. I, I don't know if you've recovered fully from your, from your, uh, was it shoulder or elbow surgery, but it was the elbow uh, surgery. Yeah. yeah. Elbow surgery. But like Ivan is known across the community for being extremely fit. So, um, what was that like at NDOC just putting people through the ringer? Uh, you know, um, it's a challenge, right? Like, you know, you like, you know, we have, we have guys that, you know, uh, that go down there to be instructors and, um, they come to talk to me about it and, uh not to go on a not, not to go on a side tangent but like you know my advice to them and like you know i wish i which i learned the hard way is man you you got to go there and uh you just go there and do your job man uh you know people decide to be instructors for specific reasons whether it's spend more time with their family or you know go to school you know um or you know just get some time off from being in the operational run like you know if you can remember why you uh, consciously made the decision to to go there Man, you'll be all right, right? Like if you don't let that job kind of eat you up, because it's it's, it's difficult, man. You got to deal with a lot of politics. You got to deal with AATC. Uh, you know that one of the unfortunate things uh, for us, not that it's an unfortunate thing, man. ATC, you know, is is a, a great command, and they do what they're supposed to do. But like it's it's you know how it is, man. It's difficult being uh, in the uh, aspect war community and then having to having the Air Force kind of run, you know, our who we are kind of, you know, deal like that. Uh, so, and you know, that doesn't go away, man. Like the politics are there, the being counters is there, uh, you know, and you know, your boss has a boss and their boss has a boss. So, you know, it is what, you know, but at the end of the day, man, you can't win. So it, it's, it's a, uh, it's a difficult cycle. So you got to kind of remember like what were, what were the main reasons why you decided to go down there to be an instructor? Uh, what if, even if it's, you know, to make, uh, you know, better operators. Right. And that was the thing is like, that's, that was my mentality. I wanted to go down there. And I wanted to ensure that, you know, man, like, you know, we were giving back to the community and, and the product that we were giving the community was, you know, something special, right? Better than us. And, uh, you know, that's a, that's a tough pill to swallow when uh, you're told that you can't do that. Like, you know, you can't do what you feel is right. And sometimes, you know, what you think is right uh, isn't, isn't right. You know, there, there were a lot of occasions where, you know, I had to uh, take a step back and, and my leadership, you know, kind of had to slap my wrist. Uh, because you kind of lose yourself, man. It, it's difficult. It's really easy to lose yourself uh, in the moment when you're, you know, you're, you're trying to, uh, you're trying to get the best and the most out of an individual who's really, at the end of the day, man, it's just some kid, right? It's just some kid that didn't know anything about hydration and couldn't run, you know. So it's it's really easy to forget yourself, uh, but especially when you're passionate, man. So, and then uh, from there, man, it's difficult. It's really easy to take that uh, that frustration home. So. It could be a, it could be a really good four years, man, or it could be a very difficult four years. Uh, for me, I think it was a little, little bit of both. Um, but uh, I enjoyed it, man. Like I, you know, you know, there, you know, it's it's uh, it's a it is Groundhog Day to a point. But I mean, you know, at the end of the day, you're there with a a great group of people. You know, you know, other instructors, man, and and it's you can keep it fun and uh, man. And I I think really where I saw. Uh, the benefits of my four years is like, you know, 
I went to the two, three after in doc and pretty much like 90%, 85% of the guys that were at red team were Jays that I put through uh, in doc, right. They're young dudes. And then, and then going on that, that deployment in 2013, I deployed with three of those guys, three, you know, that I became very close with. And man, just like reading the sit reps, man, reading like, you know, what the, the teams they were supporting were saying about them, like seeing like what they're actually doing, the, you know, the numbers they're putting up, man, it was, it was uh, very fruitful, you know, and I remember, uh, I remember just being incredibly proud, um, you know, and telling my wife, man, like, you know, I, I'm sure she'll disagree, but for me, you know, those four years, that's where it really shined for me. Like, you know, seeing, uh, you know, my peers, you know, the, those, those young guys just, man, just, just tearing it up, man. And just doing the job and jobbing out, man. And, and that was, you know, because I, I, I truly believe it was because of, uh, you know, the, the selection process we put them through and, and the things they, you know, they, they, they dealt with, you know, going through selection in the pipeline, man, like it was a testament to all the instructors in the pipeline uh uh you know what the guys were doing downrange so it was awesome man yeah i mean it's really important what the folks at the pipeline and, and i'll just call it the pipeline now uh, regardless of the school you're at whether it's at you know the prep course or um you know ans or pre-dive scuba school and all that kind of stuff like everything that they're doing is extremely important it's and it's shaping the future of special tactics and the pj community so it's it's um man, it's, it's important stuff. And yeah, you're right. It's groundhog day and it's easy to get lost in it. Um, but everything you're doing is really important. Have you kept up with the changes in the, in the pipeline? Uh, you know, a little bit, um, you know, I, I am aware of, uh, you know, the new process. I'm actually going down there next week. Uh, in about two weeks, I'm heading down there, me and a couple of the other squadron leaders just are going to go down there and observe, uh, you know, a portion of an ANS. Um, so yes, I guess I, at this point, I, you know, it's hard difficult for me to say no. I don't know exactly everything, um, and uh, but I mean, I know for pretty much what's going on. Yeah. Oh man, I'd love to get this out before you go down there. I I won't be able to because we just we've got a line, but I'd love to have this out for because all those dudes that are going to A and S are just oh no. <laughs> <laughs> no man, like you know, you know. You've had the conversation with uh, a lot of the guys, you know, uh, that you've had on the show. Um, and, uh, you know, at the end of the day, man, like, you know, the guys that are down there, you know, you, I mean, you got a phenomenal wing commander, man, right now that, uh, man, I would, I would die for. Like, and I, I love that man so much and I respect him so much. He's such a, a great leader. Nah, I got nothing, nothing but good things to say about him. Like, you know, you know, I went through AST with him and uh, <clears throat> it's, Silly man, it's incredibly charismatic and like, you know, truly cares about people, truly cares about the mission. Like, like I said, I got, I, I would die for that guy. Uh, you know, and then, you know, you got a group commander, man, that I, I, I helped put through phase two and I gave him the thumbs up, man. And, you know, he's, dude's a firecracker. And, uh, yes, he is. Like I, man, I, you know, it, you know, and the guy's, I mean, the guy's phenomenal, right, man? And he works his ass off and, uh, like, you know, regardless of whether you know i disagree with him which we do disagree a lot but i mean like man, he, the guy's phenomenal man he works you know he cares and you know he only wants the best for uh you know for the career field uh you know and i, I don't know who the squadron leadership is there but i mean i guess my point is like you know we have phenomenal leadership in place right now uh that i trust right i trust uh that you know they're they're doing uh what they believe is right you know, to better the community. And not only that, you know, even more so you have, you know, the, the, the senior NCO leadership that we have there are guys that I love and respect, you know, um, you know, from the squadron to the group, to I me, mean, to the wing. I mean, like, you know, you got three chiefs there now that I mean, are, are personal friends of mine and I respect the hell out of man. I would do anything for, um, and I, I, I trust that they're advising, you know, the commanders, uh, you know, and, and telling them, you know, giving them their advice and, giving them hell when they disagree with them you know they I man that's their job that's your job as a senior ceo is like to help guide your you know your commanders to help hopefully make the best decisions um and you know at the end of the day like we we have to right we've got to trust our brothers that are on the line man that are in the trenches like you know trying to build these products um you know uh 
at the end of the day, man, like, you know, there's, there, you know, one of our guys was charged with creating this course, this new course for the community and, you know, uh, you know, mounts and uh, like, you know, I would not expect him to provide a product that would fail us. You know, he, he put his heart and soul into it and he gave, uh, you know, he did what he was supposed to do. Um, so, you know, I have no doubt that, you know, the product that's being uh, provided to the community isn't, isn't anything but stellar. Um, uh, you know, now, whether I feel like, you know, that's what's best for pararescue, uh, it's a whole different story. I'm not going to get on that soapbox, not on this, not on, you know, not on uh, the internet, but, um, but at the end of the day, man, like, you know, the guys down there are, are phenomenal. They're phenomenal men, man, and doing great things. And uh, I, I wouldn't expect anything less from them. Oh, right on. And I think that's fair. And I couldn't agree more with, you know, the, the current wing commander and chief and the group commander in chief. Uh, those guys are awesome. So, yeah. um, and have been on the podcast, at least a couple of them anyway. So, yeah. um, so we, we generally try and keep these at about 50, 50 minutes to an hour. So I'm going I'm to ask you now, um, that way I have it on record, uh, to get you back on the podcast. Because what I'd really like to do um, is especially get you on after you revisit, or not after you revisit, but after you visit ANS and see the pipeline just and you digest what you what you saw down there and just to give your opinion to kind of contrast and compare and i'd also like to deep dive into hurricane katrina again because uh -huh. like I, I could see your face light up um so i know that there's a lot of goodness in there and i think that it would be really cool to share uh with folks so i'm i'm gonna hold you to putting you on the pod having you on the podcast again at a later date but one thing before we leave and and i know i've mentioned the car accident i think i'm going to save that for another time um, but when we were texting about this you had brought up hey a really good question that aaron had asked uh, a couple oh, yeah, of guests, yeah, yeah. and i and i want to ask you hmm. at what point in your career um and and maybe it wasn't during afghanistan maybe it wasn't during katrina but at what point did you realize things like oh shit this is real yeah man I, I thought that was a really cool question i think uh, you asked uh it was chad you, you guys had asked chad um uh and uh man it, i you know like and i was actually driving uh downtown to pick up my wife's uh, christmas tip when i was listening to the podcast and i was like it just got me thinking man like <clears throat> but i you know I, I think i think most of everybody would have like you know just that one defining moment like and for me you know uh it was like i don't know the exact date but it was uh it was at the end it was like right before new year's uh to that so it was december 2001 right <clears throat> and uh i was uh attached to uh the qrf and um we had to there was a i think it was a a blue team at the time that they were in some kind of engagement and we were called to just go in and pick up uh some of their wounded and it was the very first mission that I was on. I was, you know, man, like uh, my team leader at the time was uh, this guy named D10. Uh, this, he's, he's such an awesome dude, man. But I mean, I, I just remember how fortunate I felt to like be with him, man, you know. And either way, you know, we landed, the, you know, we're like coming in, man. And you can see off the, the off the ramp, man, there's like tracers, like, you know. And it wasn't anything crazy, man. But, you know, you can see sporadic tracers and stuff like that. And in all comms, you could hear that the, uh, the team was uh, actually in an uh, active tick. You know, and the, you know how the 53 just blows up, you know, like so much dust, man, especially over there. So I just remember like coming in, man, and boy, you, you just can't see anything. Every once in a while you can see a tracer like fly by, but I mean, it's like brown out. <clears throat> and, you know, so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna lie, man, I was terrified. Like, you know, first of all, I'm, I'm scared. Like you can't see anything. So I hope we don't crash. Right. Um, so I just remember, oh, man, I'm just like hugging the ground and um, we, we, you know, we, we settle down, the bird settles down and, I just remember Lewis like turns and looks at me and he, he just literally like we're on knots. He just, and he's yelling and he just looks at me. He's like, Hey man, no matter what happens, just stay behind. Me. And I'm, you know, I'm like, okay. And like, <laughs> and that was it, man. He, he literally jumps off the ramp and starts moving out, dude. Right. I, I don't even know how he knew like what direction to go in. Like, you know, I was like, I just didn't know anything. And he just took off running and I just remember, okay. So I, I jump off the ramp and I'm just like running on, and I'm just trying to stay with him and I'm just trying to, like staying right behind him. And I just remember, you know, once again, you can see like inverted tracers going off and I'm just like, you know, in my mind, like, holy crap, you know, this is actually happening. Right. But then I just remember I focused on Lewis 
And he was like, you know, he was just like, like it was nothing. Like he was just moving out. Like it was nothing, you know, he's just moving to the gym. He was just working. He was just working. And I just remember like be, kind of being like everything stopped for me. And I was kind of in awe at that moment. Like, I'm just like looking at this guy. I'm just like, Holy crap, man. Like, like, you know, I'm wondering if he's being affected by like the surroundings the way I am. And then it, but at the same time, I was like, but it didn't seem like it, right? Like so much is going through my head, but I'm just like, I'm just seeing him from behind. But I just remember, like, like I said, he was just like, you know, the switch turned on from him and he was just moving out and just working. And I was like, holy crap, man, that is awesome. You know, like it was awesome, you know? And then, and that was it. That was it for me. I was like, just, I mean, the switch just turned on. It was like, go to work, you know? And so, you know, from there, we just, you know, I mean, you can imagine what happened. We just picked up our patients package, like got it, got it back on the bird, man. And then, you know, just, you know, headed out. But I mean, dude, it was, it was such a surreal moment for me. It was really the first moment I was like, man, like, like that's what you're supposed to do. Right. You, you know what you're supposed to do and you just do it. Like no matter, you know, no matter what's going on around you, you just go to work. So yeah, man, that, that's when it, that was like, you know, that's really when it hit me. I know the kind of, kind of dude you're, you're talking, I don't know him, but that kind of person that you see in a an ex- extreme situation like that or even in a benign situation and it's it's the same it's the same professionalism it's the same work ethic it's the same just um tone it's like i'm here to do work i'm going to do work to the best of my ability and then move on that's that's all it is yeah which yeah. that is what you know, Air Force Special Warfare, that is what uh, other SOCOM entities, you know, the NSW and USASOC and MARSOC and stuff, like that is what we try and breed. Um, and I, dude, that, uh, I, I love it, even though, you know, you're not going to detail, like that type of person is who we're looking for. And, and it's rare that you're that type of person, your first encounter, your first stressful situation like that. But as soon as you get that, you know, that first one out of the way and you you debrief with yourself and you realize what, what you need to do, like the rest is gravy. It's good. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, man. Once, you know, once you, you flip that switch on the first time, man, like, like it's automatic after that, right? Man, you just just go to work, dude. Yeah, exactly. So, well, Ivan, again, it's been a pleasure. Uh, Really appreciate you coming on. It's taken me two years to get you on the podcast. Hopefully it won't take me another two years. Like I said, I want to get you on uh, post your uh, ANS visit. So we'll look to to re-engage here pretty soon. But again, honored to have you on. You've been a lifelong friend and uh, man, it's, you're an awesome person to know. So yeah, yeah, man. So everybody that's out there, appreciate you tuning in. Make sure you like, subscribe, um, comment, leave a review, whatever you got to do. Check out our collaborations with uh, some of the companies that we use and then uh, go from there. All right, you guys see you later. All right, brother. Take care.